Hello everyone, my name is Laneng from Vietnam and today I would like to present about the translator trainee's attitude toward the teacher questioning behavior. Now what makes me interested in this topic is that the questioning behavior is considered to be a very vital part in the teacher-student interaction and it is also considered to be a basic unit underlying all the teaching methods. However, it's not always uh, adopted effectively in the classroom. Uh, and uh, as uh, Good and Brophy stated that, in too many classrooms, the discussions are like paralyzed sessions with the teacher asking the question, the student responding, and then so on. And I think that this is of more concern uh, in, the, in the context of a translation classroom uh, because um, in um, in such classroom, it is often characterized with the teacher asking, asking uh, students rendition and correcting their answer uh, and pointing out the final suggestion. This uh, approach is also considered to be like obsolete and unproductive by uh, Davis uh, in 2004. So we can see that questioning behavior is important but whether it is can be adopted effectively in the context of uh, translation classroom or not uh, remains a doubt. So uh, as the students are the one who per directly perceive the uh, teacher's uh, questioning, uh, that's why I would like to uh, conduct a research on the student's uh, attitude toward the teacher's questioning behavior. And in this research, I would like to find out about the uh, their attitude towards the teacher's questioning behavior as well as uh, uh, find, uh, identify the factors that can facilitate their learning experiences um, with this approach. Now literature review, uh, so we can see that translation is actually the way that um, we reformulate uh, a message from the source language into the target language. And it's also regarded to be to consist of at least two phases. The first one is target analysis, and the second one is encoding or translation. Even though translation has a long story, translation pedagogy uh, is it still remains a young uh, field. Uh, in recent years, some uh, new and modern approaches have been pointed out, like. Uh, a process oriented approach and the second one is the situational one and the last one is text by approach uh, the focus is basically on the text and um, however uh, we can see that in many uh, translation um, classrooms the, uh, the uh, approach uh, a traditional approach is still adopted which is asking students to translate and then giving them the uh, suggested um, uh, translation and um, I think that because maybe it's this kind of traditional one and, uh, and, and it sounds repetitive and monotonous so not uh, many research have been conducted so far to identify the, uh, you know, the benefits of, uh, of this uh, type, of this approach. Meanwhile, we have the teaching behavior, uh, the teacher uh, questioning behavior. Uh, so here we have uh, the question is defined as a sentence or phrase used to find out information. However, uh, the previous studies show that uh, actually in the context of a classroom, the question is, office, uh, is um, often uh, used as a um, pedagogic tool which helps students to uh, achieve the um, learning objectives. Um, so uh, we want to find out whether um, the teacher questioning behavior is uh, effective in helping uh, the translators um, trainee to um, uh, learn uh, translation. In terms of the research method, uh, I employed uh, the both quantity, uh, quantitative and qualitative methods with uh, the questionnaires. Uh, um, were done by 35 students who uh, were studying a, a dual degree in uh, English language at uh, University of Languages and International Studies. And 
and um, uh, they have uh, they had completed two translation courses, so they have certain comparison between the courses. Beside the questionnaires and open-ended questions, I also had three interviews. And here's the results of the study. Uh, the first is about the, the attitude of students towards the questions of teachers about the text analysis. Let's see, a large number of students uh, consider that these questions uh, is, um, is helpful to them. Uh, they say that it's helped them to understand the whole context, help them to identify the tone and register of the text, help them read between the lines. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next question that uh, teachers often um, ask um, in the translation classroom is ask the student translation. And uh, actually we can see here, um, most of the, basically all students, five, these type of question useful to them. Only 20% of the students think that uh, it is just moderately useful uh, and the rest they think uh, this question is useful or very useful. The reason why they like this question is that they feel that um, they, they, they gain the personal attention and care from the teacher because the teacher correct their own translation. And uh, that make they feel happy uh, to to have the translation commented. Uh, Why they also have uh, some you know uh, as best we can see here some unsolved segments to be addressed. And uh, actually, the attitude towards the uh, this question is basically contradict with previous studies because in previous studies uh, researchers find out of uh, the, the researchers uh, show that mm, the students um, uh, found this way in uh, this approach really ineffective and as far uh, like um, Anne or Connolly um, share that it was difficult for any students whose translation differ from the master version to gain confidence in their own work um, and she also shared that uh, when the teacher said that her answer was inaccurate she hesitated to enter the, uh, the further discussion but basically here we can see that in, um, in my study the students have a really positive um, attitude towards teacher questioning uh, to find out about their uh, translation. Uh, however, I also found that uh, even though the student have a positive um, uh, attitude towards the teacher uh, questioning about their translation, they, uh, uh, there are some factors that really uh, determine the success of this approach. And I would like to present it now. The very first factor that can affect a translation uh, student learning experience is their teacher um, attitudes or the teacher feedback. Uh, here, um, as the uh, uh, student, uh, some of the students joined in the interview shared that they felt they felt really in first, uh, they felt really frustrated and demotivated if the teachers, like um, you know, the teacher totally dominated the class and um, rejected all of their answers. Um, instead, they prefer the teacher who can you know, appreciate their answer and give them the corrective uh, feedback in, an, uh, in a constructive way. And they also believe that because they are the, the students measuring in languages, so they also have sense, certain sense in their um, in, 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 in terms of languages. So they really want their, their answer to be appreciated. And this is also um, in consonance with previous studies because previous studies show that the, uh, the way that the teacher giving feedback is really important and it's also a difficult task. Uh, and because if we correcting the student answer in a 
A wrong way is may uh, consider to be a faith threatening act. So, in general, uh, we can see that the translation uh, translator trainer should have a constructive, uh, corrective feedback to to teacher to students in a way that they do not in a way that do not um, uh, affect their self esteem and motivation to learn. And the second factor that I found is also important in the student learning experience is the homework preparation. Uh, here, uh, we um, most of the students agree that the um, far it's really hard to follow the follow the, the lesson if they haven't done the homework before. And um, one student in the interview also shared that if they uh, just um, if they hadn't done their homework. Uh, it means that they would just rely on in-class translation, other students' translation, uh, and, uh, and it easily went into one ear and out the other. They could not really uh, fully uh, comprehend the lessons. So the homework preparation here is play a really important role. Um, it gives students a chance to have their, to develop their own um, you know, autonomy, their own thinking, and their own translation. And it's also helped them to develop a very important habit of a translator, which is researching our uh, searching skill or, or, you know, the individual um, uh, working skill. And it's also, not, um, it's also worth noting that um, even though homework preparation plays an important role in these classes, um, not many students have, um, uh, you know, done homework um, like uh, fully, in a, uh, like uh, or regularly. Here we can see from the the chart here, um, we can see that uh, we have some part of students who do not, uh, who didn't do their homework. Um, regularly like about here a 15% rarely do their homework. So it, sh uh, it is suggested that the teacher should um, you know give a, an, um, a proper volume of homework to, to students based on their level as well as their workload. Uh, for example here for students who taking dual degree is mean two degrees so they often have a huge workload so maybe the volume of the homework could be reduced a little bit. And the last factor that can affect the students' um, learning experience is the, the adoption of audiovisual materials. Um, not only uh, we can see that in translation classes students have to deal with um, overloaded um, a lot of a lot over, overloaded with you know written works they have to deal with the letters the words the paper and uh, um, you know all of them are in written form so it could be tiring sometimes therefore the adoption of audiovisual materials would be you know helpful it creates a change of scenery and a sense of relaxation um, in the in this classroom and in this um, in this uh, case study, uh, the students are interest, were interested in the video that illustrates a translation pattern, um, um, and, and also some audio or video material, like interesting audio or movie extracts or songs um, that they have to inter uh, they have to translate. Okay, and um, they um, they also think that um, the the videos uh, can uh, are really entertaining, and if the videos are in interesting and are linked directly to the content of the lesson, it would be really useful. It serves as a, an authentic source of material um, to the students, and uh, also as I said before, is. Uh, give uh, the lesson a kind of a kind of entertaining atmosphere.
And this is basically in coincidence with previous studies uh, because uh, the previous study showed that audio-visual materials um, can improve student interest in the lesson, avoid monotonous learning environments while constituting a useful authentic source of language learning. So in conclusion, um, the study uh, found that the uh, translator trainer questioning behavior is somewhat uh, productive uh, to, uh, to the translator uh, trainee here. Uh, it still helps them uh, to develop their translation. It still helps them to, and, and many students enjoy it because of the personal care. It's a sense of personal care that this approach brings. And, uh, mm, however, it's also worth noting that this approach should, uh, should go hand in hand with some other aspects. The first one is the teacher uh, constructive um, feedback, the teacher constructive attitude. Uh, the second one is the homework preparation. And the last one is the incorporation of audiovisual materials. Uh, and that is all uh, for my research. Uh, I really hope to receive the feedback and comments from you guys. Thank you very much for your uh, attention.